For those who don't know, the LeftTube community is a loose collection of left-wing educational channels that start to gain popularity around 2017 in response to all the right-wing content on the platform. Some LeftTubers do analysis videos where they carefully break down political issues, others do media analysis, and some do... uh... <laughs> LeftTube is also known as BreadTube, named after the breadbook, and if you don't know what that is, well, go read the breadbook. If you've noticed anything about the clips that I've been playing, the content and its creators are overwhelmingly white. And I'm not the only one who's noticed. For a community that's devoted to progressive politics, the lack of inclusion is a problem. So why is this? 1. Material Reasons For one, LeftTube content is almost entirely in English and meant for a Western audience. There's a lot of political channels out there in other languages for other countries, but that usually doesn't get included as part of the community. Within English-speaking countries, there is a few things that you need to become a YouTuber. For one, you need a lot of disposable income for equipment that'll make your content presentable. A microphone, a good camera, editing software, and a computer to run it. On top of this, you need free time, <laughs> a lot of it. For the first year or two, creating videos is an expensive, time-consuming hobby, and if you're on this channel, you probably know which race generally has more leisure time and money on their hands. This leaves the pool of potential YouTubers of color much smaller than their white counterparts. It's as much of a class problem as it is a race one, since YouTube is a largely middle-class affair. YouTube bills itself as the platform for everyone. But because of that, its content will reflect the messy realities of the outside world. So is that it? Roll the outro? Not exactly. I've spent months thinking about why left-wing political content on YouTube is so white, and it's a complicated case. Beyond the material aspects, a pretty sizable part of the blame falls onto the shoulders of the main canonical LeftTubers. 2. Most LeftTube content exists only for white consumption. If this sounds controversial, it isn't. The top creators have admitted it implicitly. YouTubers like ContraPoints and Sean have flatly said that a big part of their goal is to win over young men and teens who are being targeted by right-wingers on the platform and it's not black or brown boys who are at risk of becoming right-wing radicals. This approach shows in their content. There is very little talk of contemporary race issues or issues important to communities of color. Instead, the focus is usually on countering the arguments of a right-wing celebrity or exploring some internet phenomena like incels. While a lot of creators have made attempts to branch out, the most visible left-wing creators remain firmly planted within right-wing discourse. And I mean, that's cool and all, but people of color, our discourse is way over here. The deliberate choice to focus on far-right talking points is a natural barrier to engagement for audiences of color. This is the problem with the entire business model the left two creators have chosen. By making content that would win over the hearts and minds of people on the fringes, they unknowingly neglected other non-white demographics. So why does this even matter? Inevitably, when you get into these discussions, you reach the guy who asks, if we're trying to build socialism, educate others, etc., because that's what LeftTube is all about, then why do we care if some middle-class people of color get their million subscribers on YouTube? It's a boutique issue, right? Well, not quite. The lack of diversity is a major limit in our ability to win over people to the socialist cause. 3. Diversity and Self-Segregation Hear me out. There's a phenomenon known as racial self-segregation. A 2016 article on The Atlantic explores the research surrounding the phenomenon. Some websites, like The Root, make it clear that they are for black people. Most websites, though, present themselves as racially neutral, think the New York Times, The Washington Post, etc. Researchers at UCLA argue that far from neutral, the internet is largely made by and for white people. Those with the most access and capital are far more likely to control the culture of the internet and reproduce it in their interests. The web is a white space, and its sensibility otherizes non-whites. By analyzing over 3,000 websites and the traffic to and from them, Professor Charlton McIlwain found that the people who usually go to non-racial sites tend to visit other non-racial sites. Similarly, visitors to racial sites prefer to click on other racial sites. And if you're a person of color or a part of really any marginalized group, it makes intuitive sense. Networks like Univision or Telemundo 
are popular among Latinx viewers specifically because they're racialized. It's for us. Now imagine if you were a white person living in a world where entertainment media was all Tyler Perry movies and Teresa knockoffs. That's kind of how it is for us. McIlwain explains that we have to look at the small ways websites project messages about themselves to their audiences. I, as a person of color, may say, look, I know what is for me. And those are a limited number of sites, and that's where I draw my boundaries. Just like how Whole Foods, or an imposing government building, or a trendy new apartment complex in the inner city are non-racial, there's clear signals that ward off people of color who know they don't belong, leaving them to be trafficked mainly by white people. The mental game is a huge barrier for creators of color. Are you experienced enough? Funny enough? Educated enough? Do you belong among your white peers? So, what's the solution? For the response. In the time it's taken to release this video, a few creators have already weighed in on the conversation, and have taken it to places I never intended on addressing in my original script, which I'm super thankful for because hashing this out on my own, I would have never thought of some of the stuff they brought up. The liberal solution to diversity has for a very long time been participatory politics. We find the most agreeable people of color, we support them, we shout them out, we collab with them. Eventually, ideally, 15% of visible creators are Latinx, 8% are black, or, you know, whatever the demographics are, so, you know, perfectly equal. In return, the creators of color are expected to fill a certain role. The Latino YouTuber, the black woman YouTuber, they become ambassadors for their entire social group. Liberal notions of diversity really just mean co-opting and tokenizing. This solution isn't really a solution. Angie Speaks has done a great job at voicing the awful effects this approach has on people of color. Being pigeonholed into a character you're supposed to play because of your race is horrible, and it's the opposite of liberating. And beyond just that, this approach never actually solved the issue. Angie puts it best when she says, You know, it just continuously, like that's what happens. Someone will pipe up and say there aren't enough leftist POCs. The other like, bread tubers will self-flagellate, make a list, and then in a couple other months, someone will fucking pipe up about how there aren't enough POCs, and the cycle just continues and continues and continues. And so when we ask why is Left Tube so white and interrogate the place diversity has in this community, really we're asking what does the ideal media landscape look like when you're a anti-capitalist? How is a leftist supposed to approach diversity? Peter Coffin and Angie Speaks were spot on, and that it all goes back to those material means I mentioned earlier. Cultural reasons like self-segregation and white bias are a huge hurdle, but they can't be solved until we solve the issue of a lack of access. <sighs> YouTube is mainly a middle class affair, meaning any solution to the diversity issue means providing material support to the creators of color. Money, equipment, everything they need to make quality content and build an audience. Their response is the creation of a Discord, where people of color interested in getting into video creation can go post their essays and get direct support from Angie and Peter. The primary goal here is ensuring that creators remain autonomous and aren't beholden to anyone except for themselves. This is the opposite of the means TV approach, which, while also trying to build up a diverse leftist media landscape, it's doing it by creating a leftist media cooperative. It's <laughs> kind of a microcosm for the distinct approaches of anarchists and Marxist-Leninists, but we have to take a wait-and-see approach to see what ends up coming out of these two movements. But they're undeniably moving in the right direction. It's in all of this context that I want to analyze this moment of Cat Black's video. Why do we have to sit around and have conversations about why genocide isn't okay? Why do we have to have conversations about this shit? Why can't you just listen to a person of color say that white nationalist rhetoric is violent and fucking believe it? While this was an incredibly powerful moment, I'd like to push back on this a little. People don't listen to white people more. White people listen to white people more. Creators of color will always be facing an uphill battle when we try to appeal to the same white audience on the fringe that white creators have covered. It's incredibly frustrating and frankly I don't think there is a solution here. 
you either keep grinding trying to be successful and try to deal with it or you change your content to try to grab a different audience that will actually listen to what you have to say. Reaching that blue ocean market, the general audience, it's going to be really hard if you're a person of color because you will probably piss off major parts of your white audience if you ever try to talk about race, cops, immigration, whatever. And I don't want to imply that black people, Latinx people, Asian people, that they're all a monolith and that they all think the same. No, I'm speaking systemically here. Race is about socialization. And white people are generally brought up in a way that if you bring up race in any leftist or socialist circle, some will be turned off by the discussion. If you want to really make it as a creator of color in political spheres, you'll probably have to sand down some of your rougher, louder edges. And if you don't, good luck out there. LeftTube is a collection of left-wing political and educational channels, but the similarities end there. Some aren't even anti-capitalist. This liberal left-wing split has really important repercussions because often individual branding, success, clout are the focus over solidarity and the socialist movement. You combine this with a celebrity worship culture and that's just not the recipe for success we'd want out of something called left tube. So, I propose a two-pronged approach to diversity on the platform. Leftists should uplift leftists of color materially. That means using our power to support existing and potential, I mean, you know, find them, get them on the platform, media and content creators of color through funding, equipment, etc. This can happen both through concrete media cooperatives or looser relations like the Angie Peter approach. Both are dedicated to building power and building the movement. And two, when it comes to people of color who are liberals and whose values and attitudes don't generally align with ours, we need to uplift them just the same. A diverse media landscape is always a good thing. So we support them in the traditional liberal way, sharing videos, names, retweeting content, so on. I think this way we can have our cake and eat it too. As creators committed to leftist principles, we can use our platform to create a unique YouTube experience. One focused on creating tight-knit, sustainable communities that center solidarity and the socialist cause. That extends beyond the platform to providing material support to aspiring creators, and even extending to real-life organizing, because if we ever want to solve diversity, then that requires the hard work of organizing beyond posting the occasional Twitter thread. I want to finish this off by saying I deeply respect the old guard of left-wing YouTube. They're the only reason I started this mess in the first place, and what they do is super important. I don't want to come off as anti-white or anything. Their content is intersectional, and they've done a lot to further socialist ideas on and offline. But as with all first waves of anything, there's room for improvement, and this is a void that the existing YouTubers just can't fill themselves. It's time for second wave left tubism. Housekeeping time. It's been almost a year since I started this channel, so if you're watching, thank you. It's been quite a journey and I haven't actually posted in like three months. If this is your first time watching a video of mine, well, welcome. If you liked it, hated it, interacting by commenting, you know, liking, disliking, subscribing will help me so much. I'm not too sure where I want to take this channel, but if you have any thoughts, any gaps in the left tube content sphere, please let me know. I'm definitely interested in bringing a stronger Latino perspective and influence moving forward. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.